Network. Welcome to A Look Ahead. We're delighted you decided to join us. We study the Sabbath School lessons as prepared by the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And this particular series is on the book of Genesis. Think of all the stories there are to talk about in the book of Genesis. We're down now to lesson 12 out of 13, so you know that we're close to the end of the book of Genesis, and we're talking about the story of Joseph. And this particular lesson will be, will ta be talking about the time he was prince in Egypt. This is the lesson for June 18 of 2022, and we'd like to begin, as always, with a word of prayer. Our loving Father, it's incredible that you have preserved these unbelievable stories for us to study and to think about people like Joseph with their sterling characters that refuse to be, uh, you know, dismissed or refuse to be tempted to step out of line no matter what the circumstances were. They worked to their very best ability and represented you correctly. May we follow their example is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, in this lesson, we will come to the end of the story of Joseph. Joseph was a powerful, powerful vizier of Egypt, and the country was only two years into the seven-year famine. You remember, we don't have time to do all these details, but remember, there was, they were told there would be seven years of plenty, and then there would be seven years of famine. So the time we're talking about right now is two years into the seven years of famine. But when Joseph's brothers appeared before him for the first time, he did not know their makeup or character. You just wonder what kind of emotions were going through his mind when he saw them. So Joseph set about to implement a number of tests to see if their characters had changed. Jim? His own brothers will bow down before him without knowing who he is, Genesis 42. Joseph's brothers will humble themselves when Joseph forces them to return with Benjamin, Genesis 43. And when Benjamin's safety is, they fear threatened, Genesis 44, they will plead for grace before the powerful man whom they see as like Pharaoh. In the end, when Joseph re reveals his identity, they will understand that despite what they are what they have done. God has brought out good out of it all, out of it all, from the Bible study wow. guide for Jan June 11. And Paul, way back in New Testament times, <clears throat> recognized this, and this must have been one of the reasons why he wrote these, this particular verse, Romans 8, 28, we know that in all things God works for good with those who love him, those whom he has called according to his purpose. And that's a little different to what King James says, we know all things work together for good. No, in the Greek, in the original, the word God is close to, up, close to the front of that sentence. And we know that in all things, God works for good. It's not that the, all things work for good, it's God works for good. Their back and forth journeys uh, from Joseph to their father and the obstacles they encounter make them remember their wicked acts toward a Joseph and toward Joseph and their father, and they realize their iniquity toward God. Joseph's brothers lived that whole experience as a divine judgment, and yet the moving emotional conclusion, which brings everyone to tears and joy, also contains a message of forgiveness for them despite their unjustifiable acts of evil from our Adult Sabbath School Bible Study Guide for Sabbath, June 11. After that incredible, after that introduction, I'm sorry, and moving back in the story, it is interesting to notice Pharaoh's response to Joseph's interpretation of his dreams. He did not seem to care about the God who revealed the truth to Joseph. I mean, Joseph had made it very clear that, how did he get this information? God had given him this information. But Pharaoh overlooks that God business because he's claiming, what is Pharaoh claiming? He's claiming that he's a God himself. Right. Oh, you got another God? Okay, fine. But you, Joseph, <laughs> he was excited about the economic plan that Joseph suggested. Then, of course, Joseph was appointed as a second command, a new vizier of Egypt. Do you think God had anything to do with Pharaoh's decision to appoint Joseph to that position? Oh, yeah. Sure. Sounds suspicious, doesn't it? 
Some critics have claimed that there is no evidence that any Israelites were ever in Egypt. However, that is proving not to be true. More and more evidence, subtle but convincing, is being found in excavations in Egypt. And if um, you are interested in knowing more about that, I would very strongly recommend that you get the, the documentary entitled Patterns of Evidence. It's available on um, Amazon and Google or whatever, I think. You can look DVD. it up. DVD. DVD, yes. Mm -hmm. We saw so, some of that way back when we, we did. were using video cameras. We were using it. We, we saw it. Kerry, all the details? All the details reported in the biblical text fit the historical situation of Egypt at that time. Politically, the fact that Pharaoh appoints Joseph as vizier is not unusual in ancient Egypt, where cases of foreign viziers had been att attested. That's from Adult Sabbath School Bible Study Guide for Sunday, June 12. From the Bible Study Guide, uh, BCG, that's his, yeah, that's his. Study Guide, Cases of foreign and even Hebrew viziers are attested throughout Egyptian history. The vizier's responsibilities were considerable. He was administrator in charge of legal justice and the manager of the land. The fact that Joseph is placed over the entire land confirms that this vizier belonged to the Middle Kingdom or the Second Immediate Period. When this official could be selected based on his qualities of wisdom... Okay, let me interrupt for just a second there. So it's important for us to recognize this. There are only certain times in Egyptian history where this kind of thing could actually happen. For one, it was a time when all of Egypt, Upper and Lower Egypt, were both included. The, the, the entire area was under one form of government. And that government was located, their headquarters was in very close to Goshen, down in the Southern Territory. And it was a time when a, a, for a visitor for, I mean, Northern a visitor. Northern Territory, I think so. I'm sorry, another, yes, Northern Territory, thank you. Uh, a time when a foreign vizier would be accepted. So there's a lot of reason to believe that there's only just one or maybe two times in that whole history when this could fit. Go ahead. Okay, that was dealing with Genesis 41:39. In contrast to other periods, during the second intermediate period under the rule of Hyksos, the viziers were the most powerful and provided the most stability despite short reigns. The description of Pharaoh's investiture of Joseph fits the Egyptian context. The signet ring, and that's dealt with in Genesis 41, 42, which is called in the Hebrew text Tabaat, designates the Egyptian signet or seal, Dijibaat, a word derived from the word Dijiba, meaning finger, finger, referring to its position around the finger. This signet ring extends full authority to Joseph to sign all official documents in the name of the king. The Hebrew term shes, designating the vestures of fine linen, as per Genesis 41:42, is an Egyptian word referring to linen cloth, which was the primary fabric used for clothing in ancient Egypt. The chain around Joseph's neck, mentioned in Genesis, uh, yes, Genesis 41:42, refers to the collar on which hung the symbol of the mayat symbol of equity, which characterized the function of the vizier. A Turkish word derived from the Arabic for the chief minister of state. Okay, now I want to interrupt here again. You see, what we're seeing here is that many influences came, come together at this particular time, and words from other languages and everything all fit at a certain time here. The rank of second mentioned Genesis 41-43, is attested in ancient Egypt as the title of the vizier, who was called the second of the king. The vizier ceremony involving someone riding on a chariot, preceded by people calling out to invite attention to his passing, 
That's gen dealt with in Genesis 41, 43. Also is an Egyptian custom. The so that's also, isn't that also what Haman yes. and Mordecai went yeah. through? Mm -hmm. The word abrek, generally translated bow the knee, that is used in our text, is not Hebrew but Egyptian. In Egyptian, the word abrek means attention, make way. Furthermore, Pharaoh gives Joseph an honorific name to mark the special distinction that is a text to his, attached rather, to his new function. The Egyptian name that Je Joseph received, Zaphnath Panaea, from Genesis 41-45, corresponds to the following Egyptian transliteration, Dif and T P W Hank meaning food of the land, this is life. Adult Teachers Sabbath School Bible Study Guide, page 150 through 159. And I spent some time looking because I almost went there here to correct the spelling on his name there because the traditional King James had Zaphonath Pania. But in actual fact, this is very, much closer to the original yeah. language, Zaphonath Pania. In addition to receiving this, this, this high position of responsibility, Joseph was given an Egyptian wife who bore him two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. God had proven once again that he could turn an evil into good. Is it possible? Romans 8, 28. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is it possible for us in our, evil, in our very evil world to turn evil into good on occasion? Hmm. When the brothers arrived in Egypt for the first time, Joseph recognized them, but they did not recognize him or his voice. He spoke to an interpreter and pretended like he did not understand them. Well, in actual fact, he understood everything they said to each other. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that was, I wonder, how, how did he keep from reacting to some of the things they said to each other? I just, wow. Well, the story is all there in Genesis 42. We don't have time to read it, but it's there. Joseph accused his brothers of being spies. That was his first thing. And they explained their situation to him through an interpreter. Joseph explained that he would not believe what they were saying to him until their younger brother was brought so he could see him. After putting them in prison for three days, Joseph released them and assured them that they would not be given any further food unless they came with Benjamin. Wow. So Ellen White's comments, Duane? The three days of confinement were days of bitter sorrow for Jacob's sons. They reflected upon their past wrong course, especially their cruelty of Joseph. They knew if they were convicted of being spies and they could not bring evidence to clear themselves, they would all have to die or become slaves. They doubted whether any effort any one of them might make would cause their father to consent to have Benjamin go with, to go from him after the cruel death, as he thought, Joseph had suffered. They sold Joseph as a slave and they were fearful that God designed to punish them by suffering them to become slaves. Joseph considers that his father and the families of his brethren may be suffering for food, and he is convinced that his brethren have repented from their, of their cruel treatment of him, and that they would in no case treat Benjamin as they had treated him. That's from Ellen White, the spirit, book Spiritual Gifts, book 3, 155 and 156. And so try to think of the struggles in their minds, because they said, our father is never going to let us take Benjamin down here. But if we don't bring Benjamin down here, we're not going to be, we're all going to starve. We're not going to be able to get any more food. There's no food back where we came from. They must have, think about their discussions on the way home. My. Yeah. Joseph's next test came when he placed their money back in their sacks along with the grain that they needed to support and feed their families. We do not know exactly how long the grain which they carried back to Canaan provided for their families, but the time came when they were out of grain again. It was very difficult for Jacob to agree to allow Benjamin to go to Egypt. He felt certain that he would never see his son again, and he would, in effect, then lose all contact with Rachel. Rachel has died, Joseph is gone, 
If he loses Benjamin, hmm. Finally, Judah pleaded with him and said that he would offer his own life in the place of Benjamin's life, and Jacob agreed. We need to remember that at that point in time, Judah was the father of two sons who had died or been killed. A third son was raising his own children. Judah was also the father of Tamar's two sons. Judah's first wife was dead. So all of those things has happened already. Yeah. His life was a myth, huh? So the ten sons of Jacob returned to Egypt with their brother Benjamin to get more grain. This visit to Egypt seemed to be entirely oriented around the presence of Benjamin. And I wonder who was responsible for that. <laughs> okay. Who's next? Charles? Genesis 43, 1 through 34. The famine in Canaan got worse. And when the family of Jacob had eaten all the corn which had been brought from Egypt, Jacob said to his sons, Go back and buy a little food for us. Let me interrupt for a second. This is a British version of the Good News Bible. So when it says corn, that's an expression that just means grain. It could have been, it could have been rice, it could have been wheat, wheat. probably wheat. Barley. Barley, maybe yeah, barley. Barley, I, I personally feel probably that was more wheat or barley or both. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Judas said to him, "The man surely warned us that we would not be admitted to his presence unless we had our brother with us. If you are willing to send our brother with us, we will go and buy food for you." If you are not willing, we will not go, because the man told us we would not be admitted to his presence unless our brother was with us. <laughs> <laughs> the man told us. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Jacob said, why did you cause me so much trouble by telling the man that you had another brother? They answered, the man, <laughs> the man kept asking about us and my family. Is your father still living? Have you got another brother? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. We had to answer his questions. How could we know that he would tell us to bring our brother with us? So Joseph saying that you're spies and you know, I'm interrogating you for inconsistencies in your story. Yeah. That's what he's doing. Yes. yes. Well, uh, when you know the background, <laughs> when you know the background, yeah. it's very easy. <laughs> and they did it to a lot of other people before them. Yeah. yeah. It's his job. <laughs> yeah, you wonder, you wonder how many other people Joseph had to deal with. I mean, he must have been, dealt, been dealing with people almost every day. Yeah. Absolutely, people but this one was a piece of cake. He yeah. was part of it. <laughs> you know? And he had fun, I think. Wow. Judas said to his father, send the boy with me and we will leave at once. Then none of us will starve to death. I will pledge my own life, and you can hold me responsible for him. If I do not bring him back to you safe and sound, I will always bear the blame. If we had not waited so long, we could have been there and back twice by now. Why yeah. are you taking so long? Yeah, there you are. Why are you taking so Dad, long? Dad, why? You know, just <laughs> let us go. So, mile-wise, how many miles? Okay, I don't know the miles. What I do know is that um, the children of Israel traveled that distance. They could have traveled that distance in two weeks. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, all of them with all their herds and everything. So, probably a, a, a group of people with maybe donkeys or something, like that, they could probably do it in a little week or maybe a little over a week. Right. I mean, men, young men. Oh. Yeah. No, this was the same. Perhaps they were in Canaan, right? And they're yeah. going to Egypt. Mm -hmm. So the same trip they took afterwards yeah. as well. Okay. Um, their father said to them, if that is how it had to be, has to be, take the best products of the land in your packs and present for the governor a little ra raisin, a little honey, spices, pistachio nuts, and almonds. Take with you also twice as much money because you must take back the money that was returned on top of your sacks. 
Maybe it was a mistake. Take your brother and return at once. May Almighty God cause the man to have pity on you so that he will give Benjamin and your brother Simeon back to you. As for me, if I must lose the children, I must lose them. This is from the Bible, huh? Yeah. As for me, if I must lose my children, I must lose them. So the brothers took the gifts and twice as much money and set out for Egypt with Benjamin. I wonder how they knew how much money to take. <laughs> the well, looked it up on the internet, right? Yeah, it's public information. You know, just call ahead. <laughs> yeah. Come use on, their, use your cell phones. Today, yeah. <laughs> they probably heard from other people who'd come from there. And they took some extra because yeah. the famine's continuing, the price is going up. Yeah. Then they were brought to Joseph's house. They were afraid and thought, we're being brought here because of the money that was returned in our sacks the first time. They will suddenly attack us and take our donkeys and make us his slaves. So at the door of the house, they said to the servant in charge, if you please, sir, we came here once before to buy food. When we would set up the camp on the way home, we opened our sacks and each man found his money on top of the sack, every bit of it. We have brought it back to you. We have also brought some money, more money with us to buy more food. We do not know who put the money back in our sacks. The servant said, don't worry, don't be afraid. Your God, your God of your father must have put the money in your sacks for you. I receive your payment. Then he brought Simeon to them. So that's interesting. He said, I got the money. Your God must have put it back. Mm -hmm. But did God do it? Did their God do it or did... Uh, Probably somebody else. Jacob. Joseph. Joseph. Or Joseph, yeah, jo Joseph. Uh, maybe Joseph or maybe, jo more likely, Joseph had somebody else do it. Now, did they have a common language? But, no. So how he did not did, have a common language. How did they speak between... So Joseph someone, someone in Joseph's house knew how to, how to communicate with the... With yeah, it was the speaking through an interpreter. Yeah. yeah. The servant took the brothers into the house. He gave them water so that they could wash their feet. And he fed their donkeys. Boy, getting good treatment here. They got their gifts ready to present to Joseph when he arrived at noon, because they had been told that they were to eat with him. When Joseph got home, they took the gifts into the house to him and bowed down to the ground before him. The dream coming. Yes. <laughs> yes. He, the second uh, time. He asked about their health and then said, you told me about your older father. How is he? Is he still alive and well? They answered, your humble servant, our father, is still alive and well. And they knelt, bowed before him. When Joseph saw his brother Benjamin, he said, so this is your younger brother, youngest brother, the one you told me about? God <laughs> bless you, my son. Then Joseph left suddenly because his heart was full of tender feelings for his brother. He was about to break down, so he went to his room and cried. After he had washed his face, he came out and controlling himself, he ordered the meal to be served. Joseph was served at one table and his brothers at another. The Egyptians who were eating there were served separately because they considered it uh, beneath their dignity to eat with the Hebrews. And we know how that happened, don't we? Thank you, Father Abraham. Yes. For lying <laughs> about your wife. <laughs> the brothers had been seated at table facing Joseph in the order of their age, from the eldest to the youngest. When this now, I, I just wonder how Joseph did that. I mean, he brought, he brought them in, and I mean, you would have thought just naturally would sort of find their own places. Did Joseph must, I mean, somehow behind the scene, he said, 
that one there. He that recognized one there. them, but huh? many years, so many years have gone by. He still recognized them. Oh yeah, yes. yeah, I yeah. Forget that. Oh yeah, yeah. But obviously, somehow or other, he directed his servants to seat them in the right order. Yeah. When they saw how they had been seated, they looked at one another in amazement. Food was served to them from Joseph's table, and Benjamin was served five times as much as the rest of them. So they ate and drank with Joseph until they were drunk. I want you to think about this for a moment. Until These they were drunk. <laughs> yes, I was well, thinking about that. that. <laughs> well, let's think about this for a moment. These men are on the verge of starvation. Yeah. Think about that. These men are on the verge of starvation. I'm sure they ate everything that was put before them. There was no question. Do you also feel, they could have said, what on earth is happening? Yeah. Well, that's all from the Good News Bible. When they arrive back in Egypt, instead of being accused of stealing their money, they are reassured and invited to a banquet at Joseph's special residence. Fortunately, none of the brothers complained about Benjamin being favored on that occasion. Why do you think Joseph arranged for Benjamin to be given five times as much food as the other brothers? From Patriarchs and Prophets, by this token of favor to Benjamin, that is, the extra-large portions of food, he hoped to ascertain if the youngest brother was regarded with the envy and hatred that had been manifested toward himself. Still supposing that Joseph did not understand their language, the brothers freely conversed with one another. Thus, he had a good opportunity to learn their real feelings. Mm. Still, he desired to test them further, and before their departure, he ordered that his own drinking cup of silver be concealed in the sack of the youngest. Wow. Patriarchs and Prophets 228-229. Wow, wow, wow. But Joseph had one further test for his brothers, the silver cup hidden in Benjamin's sack. And here's the story, Genesis chapter 44. Joseph commanded the servant in charge of the house, filled men's sacks with as much food as they can carry, and put each man's money in the top of his sack. So they Do it again. Do it again. Mm -hmm. Put my silver cup, not just the money, put my silver cup in the top of the youngest brother's sack, together with the money for his corn. He did as he was told. Early in the morning, the brothers were sent on their way with their donkeys. When they had gone only a short distance from the city, Joseph said to the servant in charge of his house, Hurry after those men. When you catch up with them, ask them, Why have you paid back evil for good? Why did you steal my master's silver cup? It is the one he drinks from, the one he uses for divination. You've committed a serious crime. Oh, boy. Yeah. When the so this, is, this is the same servant, it sounds like, that actually put the money and the cup in their sack. So <laughs> he, knew, he knew where it was. Yeah. When the servant caught up with them, he repeated these words. They answered him, What do you mean, sir, by talking like this? We swear that we have done no such thing. You know that we brought back to you from the land of Canaan the money you found on the top of our sacks. Why then should we steal silver or gold from your master's house? Sir, if any one of us is found to have it, we will be, he will be put to death and the rest of us will become your slaves. Hmm. He said, I agree, but only the one who has taken the cup will become my slave and the rest of you can go free. So they quickly lowered their sacks to the ground. Each man opened his sack. Hmm. Joseph's servants searched carefully, beginning with the eldest and ending with the youngest. And the cup was found in Benjamin's sack. So they must have found their money again. Yeah, they saw the yeah. money. Yeah, that didn't, yeah, yeah. Whatever, you know, that didn't surprise them. I mean, you know what? Their hearts must have sank. <laughs> yes. What's this? Must. What's going on? The brothers tore their clothes in sorrow, they loaded their donkeys, and returned to the city. When Judah and, Judah and his brothers came to Joseph's house, he was still there. They bowed down before him. This is getting to be a regular thing, isn't it? <laughs> and Joseph said, we have done... What have you done? Didn't you know that a man of my position could find you out by practicing divination? What can we say to you, sir? Judah, Judah answered. How can we argue? How can we clear ourselves? God has uncovered our guilt. All of us are now your slaves and not just the one with whom the cup was found. Joseph said, oh no, I would never do that. 
Only the one who had the cup will be my slave. <laughs> the rest of you may go back safe and sound to your father. <laughs> wow. He's really putting them through the... Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Judah went up to Joseph and said, Please, sir, allow me to speak with you freely. Don't be afraid. Don't be angry with me. You are like, king, like the king himself. Sir, you asked us, Have you got a father or another brother? We answered, We have a father who is old and a younger brother born to him in his old age. The boy's brother is dead, and he is the only one of his mother's children still alive. His father loves him very much. Sir, you told us to bring him here so that you could see him. And we answered that the boy could not leave his father. If he did, his father would die. Then you said, you will not be admitted to my presence again unless your youngest brother comes with you. Oh, boy. When we went back to our father, we told him what you had said. Then he told us to return and buy a little food. We answered, we cannot go. We will not be admitted to the man's presence unless our youngest brother is with us. We can go only if our youngest brother goes also. Hmm. Our father said to us, You know that my wife Rachel bore me only two sons. One of them has already left me. He must have been torn to pieces by wild animals because I have not seen him since he left. If you take this one from me now and something happens to him, uh, the sorrow you would cause, would cause me would kill me old as I am. And now, sir, Judah continued, If I go back to my father without the boy, as soon as he sees that the boy is not with me, he will die. His life is wrapped up with the life of the boy, and he is so old that the sorrow he would cause him would kill him. And he, of course, he didn't know who Joseph was at this point in time, but this must have been a powerful argument to Joseph. What is more, I pledged my life to my father for the boy. I told him that if I did not bring the boy back to him, I would bear the blame all my life. And now, sir, I will stay here as your slave in the place of the boy. Let him go back with his brothers. How can I go back to my father if the boy is not with me? I cannot bear to see this disaster come upon my mm. father. Good he news, matured Mike. a lot after the, in that experience, hadn't he? Wow. Yeah. Mm. That Joseph was using a divination. And actually, not just, not just Judah, but the whole, no. all the brothers. And Joseph. The, well, Joseph, we, uh, yes, clearly, but. Even even all those brothers I'm about, and Judah matured yeah. tremendously. Right. Yeah. yeah, right. And he has a right. he's got a, a daughter-in-law with two young grandsons and and one son still left that has a family and mm. he's saying no I'll I'll stay here. That yeah. Joseph was using a divination cup did not mean that he believed in his power. Tim, <clears throat> what deed? Is it that we have done that you have done or ye have done? He said, What ye not that such a man as I can certainly divine, Joseph designed to draw from them an acknowledgement of their sin of, of their sin. He had never claimed the power of divination, but was willing to have them believe that he could read the secrets of their lives. Ellen White, Patriarchs and Prophets, page two twenty nine. Point five, Jesus was satisfied. Oh, Joseph. Joseph was satisfied. He had proven, excuse me, he had proved his brethren and had seen in them the faults of true repentance for the their sins. The, the what? The fruits. fruits of you said faults. Oh, so the the fruits. I'm sorry, fruits of true repentance for their sins. Ellen White, Spiritual Gifts, Book Three, Page One Sixty Five, Paragraph One. Probably the ultimate evidence that the brothers had changed was Judah's fervent plea that he be taken to the slave and allowed Benjamin to return to his father. This might remind us of the fact that a ram was caught in the thicket as a substitute for Isaac. And I can tell you that our lesson makes a big deal of substitution here. Judah in place of Benjamin, ram in place of Isaac. I, I don't think that's a big deal myself. This might remind us of the fact that a ram was caught in the thicket. Okay, the culminating event of this whole story, the focal point is found in Genesis 45. Carrie, bring us. Joseph was no longer able to control his feelings in front of his servants, so he ordered them all to leave the room. 
No one else was with him when Joseph told his brothers who he was. Now you wondered, the brothers had been using interpreters all the way through the Sepharth, mm -hmm. and now he tells all the Egyptians to leave, and you wonder, they would the brothers they... must have thought, who's going to interpret for us? Is he going to shoot us? Well, yeah, what's he going to yeah. do? Yeah. Go ahead. He with such loud sobs that the Egyptians heard it, and the news was taken to the king's palace. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph, is my father still alive? <laughs> but when his brothers heard this, they were so terrified that they could not answer. And Joseph said to them, please come closer. They did, and he said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. Now do not be upset or blame yourselves because you sold me here. It was really God who sent me ahead of you to save people's lives. This is only the second year of famine in the land. There will be five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor reaping. God sent me ahead of you to rescue you in this amazing way and to make sure that you and your descendants survive. Okay, hold on for just a second. <clears throat> Gordon, you're a neurologist. What was going on in the brain? What was going on in the, <laughs> the, the digestive system and the heart <laughs> and everything? It was, was, it was an automo autonomic system overload. <laughs> they, what? What's going on? I, blood pressure rose, their blood pressure <laughs> fall, fell, they got pale. And they were, I'm sure they red. were standing with their mouths open. Yeah. <laughs> what can we say now? And, and did they, did they, they must have had, they must have looked at him much closer. Oh, yes, yeah. <laughs> I think it is Joseph, you know? Wow. Anyway. When he's talking their language, yeah. then maybe they recognize his voice. When he was yeah. talking a, Egyptian. an Egyptian language, you know, who's going to recognize, who's going to recognize me if I talk some other language? Yeah. So it was not really you who sent me here, but God. He has made me the king's highest official. I am in charge of his whole country. I am the ruler of all Egypt. Wow. Now hurry back to my father and tell him that this is what his son Joseph says. <laughs> God has made me hmm. ruler of all Egypt. Come to me without delay. You can live in the region of Goshen when you can be near me, you, your children, your grandchildren, your sheep, your goats, your cattle, and everything else that you have. If you are in Goshen, I can take care of you. There will still be five years of famine, and I do not want you, your family, and your livestock to starve. Wow. <laughs> that was the most fertile land in Egypt. Yeah. And <clears throat> his brothers get it. Yeah. Joseph now continued, now all of you and you too, Benjamin, can see I am really Joseph. Tell my father how powerful I am here in Egypt and tell him about everything that you have seen. Then hurry and bring him here. Now here's the big question. Did Benjamin know what had happened <clears throat> to Joseph? By this he probably figured it out or might have been told, we don't know. All that he, all that he knew probably was that was Joseph had been torn by a wild animal, and here was his yeah. coat covered with blood. I think it was a family secret. I don't it's think the brothers ever secret that only ten brothers yeah, knew. Only ten brothers knew. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But if ten brothers knew, other people knew. Wives knew. That's right. Maybe. 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 <sighs> It's something like that. I think you would keep it pretty close. The yeah. wives knew it would go up. You wouldn't go around blabbing about <laughs> it. <laughs> My wife isn't here right now. Did you find <laughs> Yeah, wow. Okay, go ahead. He threw his arms around his brother Benjamin and began to cry. Benjamin also cried as he hugged him. Then, still weeping, he embraced each of his brothers and kissed them. After that, his brothers began to talk with him. They finally found out that they could, they could talk. Yeah. When the news reached the palace that Joseph's brothers had come, the king and his officials were pleased. He said to Joseph, Tell your brothers to load their animals and to return to the land of Canaan. Let them get their father and their families and come back here. 
I will give them the best land in Egypt, and they will have more than enough to live on. Tell them also to take wagons with them from Egypt for their wives and small children, and to bring their father with them. They are not to worry about leaving their possessions behind. The best in the whole land of Egypt will be theirs. Wow. They really turned it on, didn't they? Yeah. <laughs> the, the, this is exactly the opposite from the Abraham story now, where they send him out. Yeah. And, and now they're bringing, yep. bringing Joseph's family in. Dwayne, why don't you pick it up there? Yeah. Carrie's had his share of reading. She sure did. It was uh, fun. Jacob's sons? Jacob's sons did as they were told. Joseph gave them wagons, as the king had ordered, and food for the journey. He also gave each of them a change of clothes, but he gave Benjamin 300 pieces of silver and five changes of clothes. Wow. He sent his father 10 donkeys loaded with the best e Egyptian goods and 10 donkeys loaded with corn, bread, and other food for the journey. He sent his brothers off, and as they left, he said to them, Don't quarrel on the way. Now I want you to think about this for a minute. The brethren came down with donkeys. Those donkeys, how much did they have to eat? Probably very little. They were skinny and scrawny, probably. And now Joseph is sending them back some fat, healthy donkeys from Egypt carrying uh, sacks of stuff. Anyway, go ahead. They left Egypt and went back home to their father Jacob in Canaan. Joseph is still alive, they told him. He is the ruler of all Egypt. <laughs> Jacob was stunned and could not believe them. But wow. when they told him all that Joseph had said to them, and when he saw the wagons which Joseph had sent to take him to Egypt, he recovered from the shock. <laughs> it was a shock, all right. My son Joseph is still alive, he said. This is all I could ask for. I must go and see him before I die. Yeah, and what did they say to him about how Joseph got to Egypt? We have no idea, sir. <laughs> or did they confess their sins right then? I think they did. Ellen White says that they confessed. Okay. What's, well, what's this line that Joseph said, don't quarrel on the way with his, to his brothers <laughs> on the way home? What's, I mean, what? Maybe why would you quarrel with, you're loaded with all sorts of good things and you're headed home and... Yeah. Quarrel, perhaps, why did we lie to him? Another yeah. test, Maybe a that's sneaky fine. test. Yeah. Well, then remember too, Benjamin. I mean, this was the first time Benjamin, I think, had probably heard the story. Right. Yeah. Right. And you know, wondered what you know, what, how could you, how could you treat our brother this way? So now, thinking back over the whole story, what do you think convinced Joseph that his brothers really had changed? Was it that speech by Judah? And maybe the bigger question is what had actually changed the brothers? Was it just a matter of time? Were they grown up now? Was it the suffering that they went through? Was it their own internal recriminations? Was it their father's example? Was it the suffering that they saw Jacob and Isaac go through? Which of these factors do you think would have had the biggest impact on you? On you? Um, Isaac was still alive for the early years of, jo of, of Joseph's life. Um, Gordon, I think you're next. Charles. During the years yeah, of Charles, yeah. since Joseph had been separated from his brothers, these sons of Jacob had changed in character. Envious, turbulent, deceptive, cruel, and revengeful they had been, but now when tested by adversity, they were shown to be unselfish, true to one another, devoted to their father, and themselves middle-aged men subject to his authority. Patriarchs and Prophets, page 225, paragraph 3. Try to imagine the ten brothers at that moment at which Joseph said, I am Joseph, your brother. They were stunned, and he had to repeat it. <laughs> Well, so for a Bible study guide, Gordon? Joseph then declares, quote, God sent me 
Genesis 45, 5. This reference to God has a double purpose. It serves not only to reassure his brothers that Joseph does not have hard feelings toward them, but it also is a profound confession of faith and an expression of hope because what they did was necessary for, quote, great deliverance, the great deliverance, and for the survival of the posterity. Jesus, uh, Joseph, pardon me, then urges his brothers to go to his father in order to prepare him to come to Egypt. He accompanies this call with specific words concerning the place they will dwell, that is Goshen, famous for its rich, rich pasture, the best in the land. He also takes care of the transportation. Carts are provided, which will ultimately convince Jacob that his sons are not lying to him about what, it, what they had experienced. Jacob takes this visible demonstration of evidence that Joseph is alive, and this is enough for him to come alive again. Yeah. Yeah, this, I, you know, could he even sleep that night, you know, when he, with a story like that? Mm -hmm. Is it really possible that Joseph is still alive? Wow. Okay, well, a little bit about genealogy and timing and so forth there. Jacob was 120 at the death of his father, Genesis 25, 26. Ten years later, at the age of 130 years, he stood before a pharaoh, Genesis 47, 9. At that time, Joseph had been governor of Egypt for nine years, seven years of plenty and two years of famine, okay? Mm -hmm. Jacob was therefore 120 years old when Joseph was promoted at the age of 30, and 108 when Joseph was sold at the age of 17. Mm -hmm. Consequently, Isaac was 168 years of age when Joseph was sold into slavery. Since this tragic event occurred while Jacob was living at Hebron with his aged father, Genesis 37, 14, Isaac witnessed the grief of Jacob and survived that event for a period of 12 years. Hmm. That's from the Bible commentary. Yeah, from the Adventist Bible commentary. Lifty Nicole. Huh. So, but all, so but Isaac all, knew this. Isaac knew this, this had happened, but he did not know, he did not live to the point when Joseph... When they found out the, right. the truth, no. Right, yeah. When Jacob saw the many gifts of the carts that were sent to carry him to Egypt, he recognized that Joseph must still be alive, so Jacob agreed to go to Egypt. Was it easy for Jacob, I'm sorry, for Joseph to be so gracious to his brethren since things had worked out so well for him? If Joseph had still been in charge of the prison and the brothers had been sent to that prison, how do you think he would have dealt with them? Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a question. Jim, I think you're next. From the Bible study guide, Joseph must have noticed their dismay at his revelation that he is their father. This can be a brother because he repeats a second time, I am Joseph. Genesis 45, 3 and 4. The brothers are worried. They may even have doubts about Joseph's claim because he does not provide any more information than the information that they have imparted to him. All of this appears suspicious, cons particularly considering the more recent experiences they have had with this man. They are concerned for their lives. This is why Joseph repeats a second time, I am Joseph. But, the time, but this time, he is more precise and adds a piece of information no one knows, except his brothers. Your brothers, excuse me, your brother whom you sold into Egypt, Genesis 45, uh, verse 4 of the end. Well, now he New, nails it, doesn't yeah, he, is he? Of the New King James Version. He adds that it was God who sent him. God sent him before his brothers for a specific purpose, quotes to preserve life. Genesis 45, 5. Joseph suggests that it was necessary that they sell him to ensure their survival. Thus the brothers thought that they had sold their brother, whereas in fact God was, it was God who was leading in that operation. The formula quotes father to Pharaoh, Genesis 45, verse 8, reflects the Egyptian title, it, 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 don't even try to pronounce it, <laughs> meaning 
literally father of God, which refers to Pharaoh as a god. Joseph does not use this expression as it was in Egyptian language for fear of sounding blasphemous to his brothers. This was a priestly title, which was borne by the highest of officers, including viziers, such as Tahotep, vizier of Israel, I see, in the year 2675 B.C. The other title of Joseph, ruler throughout all the land of Egypt, Genesis 45, 8, refers to his rule over the entire country of the two lands, Upper and Lower Egypt, and reflects another Egyptian title, N.B. Title T three Y. This is this is an example of what you of, of trying to read your hieroglyphics. Yeah, I mean, look look at that. I mean, how how in the world? What, what would you? You don't even know what to say. Uh, quotes the Lord of Two Lands, which was an official permanent title borne by the deputy of Pharaoh. Note that the dual form of the Hebrew word Mitzrayim. For oh, that you see the I am at the end. Think about the word Elohim. Plural. Elohim. That's a plural. For quotes Egypt reflects the two divisions of Egypt. Joseph's emphasis on this status in Egypt, on his status in Egypt, is intentional. It emphasizes his extraordinary position, thereby reminding his brothers of the dream, which had be portrayed him as ruler, a ruler to whom all including his father, would bow. Genesis 37, paragraph, uh, uh, verse 9. Alluding to the dream, Joseph is using the fulfillment of this dream as an implicit argument for God's providence. From the Bible Study Guide, page 160 and 161. Well, last week we looked at what we call a chiasm that was uh, put together by Gary Rensberg, Actually, there were um, three other Hebrew scholars that had come up with that idea earlier, but he put it together in a book called The Redaction of Genesis. And he, he shows how the story of, of, of Joseph develops step by step by step to a certain focal point, and then it comes back again. This is, and now we've, we've, seen, that in the, in, we've seen that happen in the, in the story of Abraham. We've seen it happen in the story of Jacob. And now it's happening in the story of, of, of Joseph. And all those people who say that, well, Genesis was just sort of thrown together from three or four different authors, and you know, and it came up with this kind of pattern, completely impossible. So Joseph's story builds to a focal point or pivotal point at Genesis 45, one to three, after which some themes and stories are repeated in reverse order, thus creating the chiastic structure. And Genesis 45, one to three, Joseph, revealed himself to the brothers. So that's the key point in the whole story. There are six episodes, which are labeled A, B, C, D, E, and F, followed by six parallel episodes building backward, F prime, E prime, D prime, C prime, B prime, and A prime, in reverse order. So the Joseph story looks like this, and we've looked at it now, we won't have to take a long time, Joseph and his brothers, they, there they are together, and of course they sell him down in Egypt, so he parts. Then there's an interlude. Joseph was not present, of course he's now, he's now down in Egypt. Genesis 38. Then there's a reversal. Joseph is, he's the innocent, he's the perfect party, Pot Pot Potiphar's wife is a guilty one, but just opposite, it turns out that Joseph is considered guilty, and Potiphar's wife is considered innocent, Genesis 39. Then Joseph suddenly arises to be the hero of Egypt uh, and the one who's going to save the whole country. And then there's two trips to Egypt, talking about his brothers, and then there's the final test with the, with the cup and so forth. And then the focal point happens when what? Joseph revealed himself to his brothers. Wow. The conclusion of this test then is... Joseph says, take these things, go, go back to my father, tell him what's happening, here's all the things to prove it. Two tellings of migration to Egypt, uh, and he, he, he talks about his experience and talks about their experience. Once again, Joseph is the hero of Egypt, and there's a reversal. Ephraim, and remember that 
we're going to get down to the end of the story of, of, of the end of Genesis, actually. And what happened? Jacob is, is blessing the children, and he blesses each of the sons until he comes to Joseph, and he doesn't just give one blessing to Joseph. He gives blessings to each of his sons, and then he crosses his hands like this, saying, the younger will be more, more blessed than the older. So he, be, he, he And basically, that's the double portion that the, the older son is supposed to get, right? So reversal, Ephraim Brown, Ephraim is considered firstborn and Manasseh is considered the secondborn. Interlude, Joseph nominally present. So now the, the family is growing, all this kind of stuff. No, Mo, Joseph is still there, but we know he, actually eventually he died and he said, take my, take my bones back to, uh, but we don't hear him any more of the story. And Joseph and his brothers, Jacob and Joseph part. <laughs> Do you think Joseph ever reminded his brothers of those dreams that he had as a youth? <laughs> he didn't need to. I don't think so. <laughs> you, don't, you don't think they would have even talked about it? Remember those dreams? <laughs> yeah. You reenacted that, that those really a couple did. times, didn't they? <laughs> what, what did you think when I told you those dreams? <laughs> you know, they, you know... How if could they? It, if it came up, I think it would have come up from his brothers. Yeah, yeah. they would probably laugh, you know. And Reminiscing, yeah. yes. It's easy for us to laugh. I, I don't think they would laugh. I, I think they would be so ashamed of what happened that... Uh, well, anyway, did they ever say, this lesson covers the time when the brothers first appeared in Egypt to purchase food until the time when Jacob decided that he must go to Egypt to see his son. The ten brothers survived Joseph's multiple tests, proving that they had, in fact, changed. What should we learn from this entire story? I wish we had more information about what caused the change in the brothers. Maybe we could learn something from that. Was it watching their father? Obviously, he was a saint. Uh, he was one of the patriarchs. Um, <clears throat> It's hard to know, but uh, anyway, the whole story is a very interesting one, one in which there are many lessons about many people and for lessons for us. Let's pray. Our kind and wonderful Father, we have come together once again to think about your word, about this particular story of the, the final acts that the Bible talks about in the, in the story of Joseph. Um, we think of what's coming up in the future, that uh, Joseph is going to be almost forgotten, the Egyptians are going to persecute the children of Israel, etc., and bring them into slavery. But all that's still future. We thank you for this story and what we may have learned. We pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.